Hello, we're going to talk about three different book references today. The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, and Good to Great by Jim Collins. All to get to the point of what is the power of godliness versus the form of godliness. So to start off with Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis, where there are some master devils, if you will. One's called an uncle, one's called a nephew, and the uncle's more experienced and he's training the nephew on how to persuade men to disobey God, so to speak, to not live correct principles, or I might add, to live correct principles for the wrong reason. Uh, their whole purpose is to push people away from God. Uh, the second book, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. This is Napoleon Hill, yes, the author of Think and Grow Rich, who has a conversation with the devil himself, as he claims in the book, and interviews him. And he persuades the devil to answer his questions to help him learn how to navigate life. One of the great principles in that book is the notion of being a drifter. One of the adversary's greatest tools is to get people to drift, drift into what he calls a hypnotic rhythm. And when you're in this hypnotic rhythm, it's no less than being hypnotized. You're hypnotized into essentially to habits, habits of doing the same thing on and off. And you do things without thinking, without inspiration, without revelation from God to inspire your desires, but to inspire your ambitions and to stretch you to think further and to be more. And thus we'll come back to good to great. When you're trying to make a company from a good to a great company, that's a great step in life to be great, to be successful, to be what's called the honorable men of the earth. Those are great, wonderful things. Then you can eventually donate lots of money as a philanthropist and have your name on lots of libraries like Andrew Carnegie. Great man, did a great a lot of good. We're not talking about good and honorable here. Those are wonderful things, but those are part of growing into mastery, self-mastery, where you govern yourself according to correct laws and principles. And this kind of mastery takes um, discipline, not in discipline as in with the strength of my arm, willpower, I'm gonna push my way through it, but discipline in the manner of submitting to the revelation I mentioned earlier, this small, still small voice of inspiration. When you live a correct principle, you are inspired. You inquire and hunger after that which is right. And as a result of that, you get answers. And when that inspiration comes, you follow it and more comes and more comes. And you're moving not from good to great, but from good to holy, or shall I say, from the form of godliness to the power of godliness. Essentially, there are, um, if I were to sum things down to three different glories, there is glory as we're taught in the New Testament, the glory of the stars, the moon, and the sun. And the stars are a shining light that gives light in the dark. And then the moon is a reflection of light, the source of light. And the sun is the light that shines forth and gives us life. So in these three degrees of glory, if we'll liken this unto this good to great concept, the good concept would be the moon, one that reflects greatness. Um, the one that teaches people to live the laws of success, like Napoleon teaches, wonderful laws of success, how to be wealthy, how to be healthy, how to have great relationships. Generally speaking, most self-help books fall in those three categories. Those are wonderful concepts, wonderful laws, but they are stepping stones to something even greater. We want to be not just a reflection of good so that we can have success, essentially doing something to get something. We want to be and radiate good like the sun, giving life and light to those that come in our contact by radiating good within us, doing good to give good. And as a consequence, you, the byproduct of doing good to give good, you get more good back. So essentially we're transitioning from doing things to have the form of godliness by doing correct principles, such as the law of success, to doing things to access the power of godliness because you're not just doing it to get what you want, you're doing it to surrender this willpower of yours to a higher power, to God's power, where he enables you not only to stretch your vision to bigger and grander things, but gives you the power to do that which you cannot do on your own, power to be more than you can on your own. So in conclusion, the three wonderful books, Screw Tape Letters and Outwitting the Devil, I highly recommend. In reading those, it helps you to understand the opposite option, that, that which would persuade you to go more for the form of godliness, or even less, the form of the natural man, to go by your pleasures and to go by your passions, rather than going by your pure ambition 
to be better and to be more. And it all revolves around implementing the teachings of the wisest of men. That's the whole point of the wise men system is to learn of the wisest of wise men lived, live accordingly and to emulate him. And when you emulate him by living his correct principles, you watch your thoughts, you watch what you eat, you watch how often you eat, you watch how much you eat, and you become a, a pure vessel in so much that he helps you to trim down to your ideal weight and he helps you to be full of vigor and life and gives you power, power of godliness to be more 